Hello Tankers and Tankettes, I've got a relatively short game for you today, but uh, it has a bit of action. This is the T-54 first prototype, a tier 8 premium medium tank that the Russians get, and it was introduced with 9.7. I actually got gifted it by Ray Lin, and if you recognise that name, well, he's gifted me stuff before. He, he also um, he pops up on Circon's stream fairly regularly as well. He's a nice guy. And there's actually another name you might recognise in this battle as well, Klingensberg over there in the Jagdpanther 2. And if you watched my Crested Duck video, the SARL, you will recognise him as the AMX 40 player in that one. So, I've not played many battles in this so far, and I haven't played many Russian mediums just full stop. I actually came to the Russian medium line via the Russian heavy line through the KB-13, and... Oh, wow, that's a nice shot. Oh, that's always satisfying, taking out an artillery. Yes, our scout's doing a good job there. Um, the T-43, you jump from the KB-13 to that, so that's where I'm at at the moment. But I've also got a couple of uh, premium medium tanks as well. I've got this. I've got, obviously, now the Rudy. I've got the, the T-3485M, which is, yeah, it's not so great in comparison with the Rudy. And I'm trying to think if there's another one. I don't know that there is. There's not that many uh, premium mediums that you can get on the Russian medium line. Although, obviously, with the appearance of this and the Rudy, you know, that fleshes it out a bit. It's quite nice if you've got a, a medium crew that you want to get the XP on. Anyway, this is good matchmaking. There is artillery, but obviously we've taken down one already. Unfortunately, no more tanks went by that got spotted by that Type 62, and as this is just regular Lakeville, it's not an encounter battle, the valley is still somewhat important, so I'm at least going to go over and try and um, take a look-see, see if we can spot anything that's actually trying to push through. And we're going to do this in a fairly cautious manner, but they've just pushed straight over, they encountered no resistance, so they just went for it, and that's kind of bad news. Now this thing... If you compare it to, uh, I mean, it's a different 100 mil gun than the T30, uh, the T44 can mount, but the stats are virtually identical in terms of the gun. The real difference between this and the T44 is in the mobility and the armor. It is a fair bit less mobile than the T44, especially in the power to weight and other speed hurts. But if I manage to get away, yeah, there we go. Okay. The, the power to weight ratio is uh, quite a bit worse than the T44 and it kind of makes up for that by having much better frontal armour. In fact, the frontal armour of the hull is basically the T54's frontal armour. The turret is probably not quite as good as the T54, but it's still pretty good for a tier 8 medium. It'll still bounce a fair few things unless people have a chance to sit and aim. Now this Cromwell B was actually playing fairly well and at this point I was saying to Klingenswerg on the, the team speak that he really maybe should consider coming back, and he, you know, he does. The Ag Panther 2 is a very good machine for doing that. Our TOGs also turn around to come and help out, because we have spotted these three tanks, but we don't know how much else there is. Meanwhile, our Type 62 is pushing down the coastal path. He's encountered another two tanks. There's another Cromwell there as well. Both the Cromwells in this game actually got fairly decent scores. And if I can get this IS-6... No, I don't know where that shell went. Okay. The reload's a bit on the long side. The aim time's a bit on the long side. But you can't really complain about... Like, if you manage to hit somebody with this gun, you can rack up a reasonable amount of damage with it. So, it just comes down to... Well, we don't know what's there, but it looks like there's maybe actually not that much. And the number of tanks that have come back, well... Town has kind of fragmented a bit. We've still got a Lerva and a T-34 too. But they look like they're being pressed in and they're probably getting sniped from the enemy base as well. So there we go. Nice hit on the VKA. And it's just a matter of like... Well, the I-6 is down, the VKA is down. It turns out there was a KV-3 there as well. So I'm now able to press around and maybe get some side shots on the KV-3. So, it was a bit hairy there. I mean, I don't think I especially overcommitted, but I underestimated how long it would take me to, to pull back if I had to pull back. And it, as it turned out, I did have to pull back. And it nearly went badly wrong. You know, one more IS-6 shot, if it had been a high roll, would have killed me. But the team responded pretty well. Uh, well, even... And uh, that's a gorilla. Okay. Um, well, okay. Bit more damage. Another kill. I'll take it. But yeah, I mean, 
this is one of the case, those cases where people were looking at the minimap and were playing smart and being responsive to what was happening on the minimap. And that's about the best you can ask for, really, is that your teammates are actually paying attention to what goes on. And the fact that I was platooned up with Klingensworth, that he could come back, you know, he gets pretty good damage out of this game as well. Um, but that was pretty nice. So we've cleared that up. We are safe from the valley side now. We can turn our attention back to the town. We've actually managed to kill most of the enemy team at this point. There are four tanks remaining. Well, three tanks and an artillery. We know the Tiger is camping. The KV-85 hasn't been spotted, so he's probably camping as well. The Tiger 2, if he's in town still, which he is, he's pressing forward, he is alone. So Klingenswerg, take, uh, Klingenswerg even takes a hit, but uh, gets one off in return. And of course, the Tiger 2 is going to come off worse out of that deal. He's also being sniped from the middle path by the Togs, and he's pretty much doomed at this point. So we've just, you know, we've got him. His attention is divided too many ways at once. There's too many things shooting at him. So none of us are really in any danger. And Klingman's work gets another kill. So three kills each. That's rather nice. So long as I don't die or he doesn't die, we've actually got brothers in arms out of this. So there is... The, the enemy tiger looks like he was moving up. Not quite sure why he chose this moment to move up, but anyway... And there's the enemy artillery. Now, our Cromwell B went through the valley. He took advantage of the fact that that flank was now clear to use his mobility. And the fact that he's a Cromwell B rather than a Cromwell means he'll probably move better on the soft ground than the regular Cromwell does. I actually, like somebody pointed out under that uh, preview video uh, that I did, that I, that I mentioned the Rudy gets, um, the pen is better than it should be for the gun it, it supposedly has. Well, that's actually exactly the same with a Cromwell B. The pen is the same as the top elited Cromwell, but it's not the elited Cromwell's gun. So I'm going to help him out. There's that KV-85, who was just hiding back there the entire time. And that's a nice hit. I, I At this range with this gun, you know, th that was a little bit lucky, I have to say. And I might even get to finish off another artillery, so that would be nice. If I roll average or high, I can get this guy. Fully aimed. Okay, that wasn't so nice. That was actually a closer shot. And yes, it went into the rock because reasons. <laughs> but I suppose I shouldn't complain. You know, I got the hit against the KV-85 when I really shouldn't have been able to. So it kind of worked out. So that was the second class. Um, it wasn't that special in terms of XP. But the damage was all right. 2700 with 1300 assistance. Um, you really do have to watch out for the mobility on this thing. It, it can catch you out. It's it's pretty slow, and that's not going to be to everyone's taste. But um, the frontal armor, like if you're facing same or lower tiers, it probably will be worth angling that frontal armor. And even the turret is fairly decent. Although the very front of the turret, there's some bits that are about 180 equivalent, but it quickly slopes out to kind of 300 plus equivalent armor. So... If you're wiggling the turret or you just get an enemy that doesn't know where to shoot you, the turret's pretty tough as well. But, uh, but yeah, it seems like an okay medium. It's more balanced as a, uh, the rest of the, the, the regular premiums are. It's not really like these event tanks where they are as good as an elited regular vehicle. It's more like, well, the gun is as good as that 100mm that you would use on the T-44, but it pays for that in other ways. And for a medium tank, one of the hallmarks of medium tanks is generally their mobility, and this doesn't really have that mobility, especially in the acceleration. The power-to-rate ratio on this is, is pretty poor for a tier 8 medium tank. So that's going to put a lot of people off right there. But... It's all right, you know, you get the shots in, then you're going to make the money on this thing. And sometimes that frontal armor is going to come in useful. And unlike the t 3485 m you don't feel like you have gimped speed and gimped firepower. You at least have the firepower because um, the 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 t 3485 3485M is just that is definitely not one you really want to go for when you can get a Rudy instead. And as Sircon pointed out in his Rudy video, if you went and bought a T3485M and then the Rudy's come along, well, you're going to feel a bit sore after that because frankly, Wargaming, um, they kind of shafted one compared to the other. And unquestionably, even though they are sort of supposed to be 
more or less the same. You know, they have the same listed gun. Um, there is no reason why you would want the 84. Uh, I keep saying that the T34 85M over a Rudy. There, there just isn't. So there we go. The pro. Um, I will probably play it from time to time just to try and get a daily on my single Russian medium crew because I only have the one crew, and it will be useful to get the XP on them. I will eventually get some more Russian mediums, but the T43 seems to be taking a long time just because I don't play it that much and I don't enjoy it that much. So the T44 hopefully will be better. I mean, the mobility looks a lot better. And then, of course, you get the T54 and the tier 10s after that. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, T54, I, I am kind of curious to play that, actually. I mean, I know it by reputation, and I've encountered it many a time, but there's nothing quite like getting your hands on a machine to play it yourself. So, if you enjoyed this video, you can leave any comments below, you can hit the like button, you can subscribe to my channel, and, as always, stay tuned for more.